In accordance with new guidelines from the diocese, congregational singing is now allowed if you are wearing a mask. So take some big breaths and sing loudly. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 1, found on page 585 in your Red Book of Common Prayer. We will read this psalm responsibly by whole verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. They meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not with the wicked. They are like chaff which wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked should not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteousness. For the Lord knows the way of the righteousness, for the way of the wicked is doomed. the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I have not asked on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. I've spent more Sundays at St. Paul's Church than any other place. I was baptized and confirmed here. I spent a whole lot of Friday afternoons in the parish office waiting on mom while she was on the phone with all of you. 
Sunday evenings with EYC, Wednesday afternoons with the choir, and all Sunday morning in Sunday school since age two. And yes, even after a whole morning of church, I patiently waited on my mom to stop talking to you and let me leave. That's a lot of church. If I'm honest with you, even though I can't, even though I can recite most of our service and hum most of our hymns, I'm not sure what I believe. I have some serious questions. Even in today's gospel, which says not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost. Destined to be lost. So the scripture might be fulfilled. Now I'm sure there are biblical scholars who can shed some light on these phrases and place them in the proper context. But before you start asking, who let this kid give the sermon, I'm going to skip to what I do know. I began singing with the St. Nicholas Choir at four. I love the snacks, most of all the honey buns, and I love Miss Pritchard all the more for it. One Sunday, Miss Pritchard decided I should sing the solo. I really, really didn't want to. But Miss Pritchard insisted, and when the time came, the well-rehearsed words fell from my lips. I'm sure Miss Pritchard smiled, an all-knowing smile. A few years later, Vince Shivers invited me to be an acolyte. Instead of a lightly attended Sunday summertime service, my very first service was the opening, the opening Eucharist for the Dyson Convention. You literally let me carry a flaming torch down the middle of a packed house. I was understandably anxious, especially after Miss Dolan told me her daughter lit her hair on fire. At the peace, Mr. Vince shook my hand and congratulated me on a job well done. From the time I was in first grade, Friday afternoons were always manna pantry days, where Timothy and I built boxes until we couldn't stack them above our heads anymore. Without mom there, you welcomed us to jump right in. Let us take ownership, and you let me use the box cutter. I still have Walton fingers. And in fourth grade, Mr. Schaefer asked me to read for lessons and carols at Sacred Heart. It wasn't long before Miss Dolan had convinced me to read regularly at St. Paul's. And during a particular Sunday, I tripped and stumbled over sentence after sentence. Later that week, I received a letter from our deacon, MK, assuring me that even she messed up sometimes. A few years more, Mr. Schaefer was at it again, this time for lessons and carols at St. Paul's. I was singing a solo with no accompaniment. I have to tell you, it was terrifying. It was a round of applause by our St. Paul's choir at that morning's practice that gave me the confidence to go down the aisle. In more recent history, <clears throat> you'll recall that I passed out during the service. I fell over the communion rail and cracked my head on the marble. From what I hear, my dad sprinted down the aisle and John Robertson and Father Dolan jumped over the rail to make sure I was still breathing. For weeks you called to check on me. Truthfully though, you shouldn't have been checking on me. Mom was the one in the real calamity. And then there's that Sunday. I was scheduled to be a Eucharistic minister for the Celtic service. And I forgot to come. Fair to say, that was not good. I share all these stories with you, not just as a 17-year trip down memory lane, but to share with you what I do know from all my time at St. Paul's. You saw in me what I could not see in myself. You believed in me before I believed in myself. And I suspect this is the way God sees us all. We just needed a community to help us get there. You gave me opportunities, encouraged me, helped me grow. And when I made mistakes, all importantly, you forgave me. It's not just these times, it's literally hundreds of events, big and small. It's the letter I received from Miss Butler, Miss Kim, I still have that note. It's Mr. Coleman taking me into the basement to see the boiler. It's fishing with Mr. Manning. It's Dr. Teasling ta talking to me about college and my career in medicine. Mrs. Yarborough proofreading my essays with the highest praise and quite tough critiques. It's Mr. Todd bringing me a Bojangles, buttermilk, Cajun filet chicken biscuit during the pandemic 
and chaperoning all of those late night lock-ins with no sleep. Mrs. Scroggs, who taught me how to tie my shoes and pulled teeth out of my head. Miss Mary, who always bakes us bread and brings us tomatoes from her garden. Miss Mary, if you're listening, I will be sending you my college PO box. I haven't found out how to ship bread yet, but if there's a will, I'm sure there's a way. It's Mr. Hillary, Father Jenkins, Rainey, Mrs. Enix, Mrs. Nussel, Mrs. Hussey. You get the picture. There are 200 of you on any given Sunday who have loved me. You've nurtured me, and we could be here a while if I kept going. As Jesus left his disciples, he leaves them with this commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. You taught me what I know about loving your neighbor. You've welcomed me, shared your gifts, trusted me, and took care of me. So as I leave you, let me leave you with this. If you welcome every person who walks through those doors, no matter who they are, the same way that you've welcomed me, and you help them find their gifts, encourage them to grow, and when they mess up, forgive them, and let them try again, then you will be the church. And you will love everyone beyond those doors that you meet, no matter who they are, the same way you've loved me. Then no matter how difficult the text, how many questions you have about the creeds, they will find Christ in you. And so, my friends and fellow seniors, walk in love as Christ has loved us. Amen. Let us stand and say together what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered at death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for the welfare of our congregation in Jessup, St. Paul's, and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, for the Mount of the Transfiguration in Jeroboca. We pray for our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Frank, for our clergy, Joe, Bill, and Erwin, for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for our president, Joe, for our governors, Brian and Henry, for the leadership of the CSRA, 
and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for all health care providers, first responders, essential workers, and all who offer themselves in service to others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Give comfort and renew their energy, strength, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Give us grace to do what you will, do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for the special needs and concerns of the parish, especially Shirley, Mickey, David, Joyce, Wayne, John, June, Hester, Aria, Bill, Margaret, Ricey, George, Louis, Sid, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Louie, Alice, Norm, Daryl, Teresa, Bernice, Marty, Barbara, Jeff, Wayne, Jackson, Beverly, Billy, Melanie, Richard, Sophie, Emma, Sage, Eric, Sweetie, Mike, Norman, Bobby, Joan, Tommy, Lori, Odell, Jill, Martha, Bo, Linda, Ash, Catherine, Mason, Dana. We pray for all those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Jonathan, Dylan, Joe, Andrew, Zach, Graham, Toby, Trey, Joe, Sylvan, Jim, Zachary, and Bennett. We pray for the members of our search committee and this parish during our time of self-study and search, that we shall grow in our commitment to one another and to the cause of your Christ, and may come to choose a faithful pastor to join us in our ministries in our parish, community, and diocese. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Emily and Jennifer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome everybody on this special Lord's Day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, the Holy Spirit has many different names. Uh, pneumos, spiritus, means breath. Breath. And what does breath do? Makes our vocal cords vibrate. Did you have fun vibrating your vocal cords today? Let's hear an amen for me right there, brother. Hey, boy. Was that fun to be singing again, even into a mass? So glad that we're able to slowly, a little bit at a time, uh, kind of soften our uh, 
our restrictions. And so getting back to singing, getting back to that choir, Keith, uh, that's what we really want to hear as soon as possible. Uh, this is a special day, it's bittersweet. Uh, and uh, we are featuring our graduates today. And uh, we're going to miss them. Uh, and you're going to miss them because obviously they've had quite an impact on this congregation and this church. Uh, without having them say where they're headed and all that kind of stuff, their little resumes are in the, uh, the bulletin. And so please refer to that. Uh, they're going to be gone. And so if they would stand up right now, all the graduates. Graduates, okay. <laughs> They're going to be gone, but they're not going to be forgotten, uh, personally, per particularly by your, the parents who will be getting little letters from now and then, send more money, send more money, <laughs> send more money. But, however, there's another powerful ministry uh, at St. Paul's Church, and that's the Daughters of the King. And they do a lot, but one of the things they do uh, is they're going to keep up with you. Once you leave Riddle Street, they're going to stay on top of you. They're going to send you letters. They're going to be in touch with you. They're going to send you little goodies every now and then. With cookies involved in that? Where's the Daughters of the King? How many are here? Stand up, please. Stand up. Yeah. Stand up. So that's, so when you see Daughters of the King on that little brown box there, you're going to say, aha, cookies. My address is 3409 Wheeler Road, too, <laughs> by the way, Suzanne, please. Uh, keep standing, uh, graduates, because I, I mean, got to have a blessing. Episcopalians bless everything. So keep standing there. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessing that our graduates have been to our community and our church. We pray that your presence will continually shine on them and that you would be gracious to them and give them your peace. We ask that you would help them to always know how very much they are loved, especially by you and by us. Make them constantly aware that you're always with them. Fill them with the faith to believe your words are true and that your spirit guides them. We pray that you give them health, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and protect them from any harm to their minds and spirits. We ask boldly for you to equip them for every purpose you have there in their lives and give them constant endurance to run the race well. Dear graduates, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Well, we're not through. Now, you're going to be having uh, to buy a lot of books. So the church has a little present for you, it's a book. And I want this on top of all your other books. You're gonna have chemistry, physics, net, and you're gonna have this one on top because this is St. Paul's expression of love for you, so don't ever forget that it's there. So, uh, if you'll come up and uh, hold your applause till everybody's up, just kinda hang out up here a minute. This is Lily, Lily. Tally, 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 Tally. And Caroline. Don't hesitate, come on if you hear it. Thank you. And Eric. There you go, Eric. And Molly Grace. Congratulations. Hey. And George. And Matthew. This is for George. This is for George. Stay up there. And for Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, come on. You can get your picture taken, too. Come on. I know, you, accepting <laughs> on behalf of George <laughs> for best actor in a drama or otherwise comedy. And Thomas. Thomas. 
Thomas is behind. Thomas! <laughs> and last but not least, Sam. All right, let's hear a big round of applause. All right. Uh, okay, if I could figure out how to work this thing. There we go. Y'all may have to show me how to do this thing here. There we go. All right. Uh, Oh, this is good. Y'all can keep on applauding me if you want to. You don't have to stop. Perfect. Congratulations, Gadge. Thank you. Do you have other announcements? I don't. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Come into his courts with thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and to serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep faith. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.